Hey, so I wanted to talk a little bit about someone I've talked about a lot over the past couple of years. Um, I have, I've talked about Gary Vaynerchuk a lot, um, especially more and more over the past year and a half. And I wanted to give some insights on, um, on, I guess, what would be, you know, the haters perspective of Gary V. So I, I started out as a Gary V hater and, um, let me be very clear. This is not going to be an apologist video for Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, this is going to be one of those rare videos where I take the contrarian side, um, and explore, uh, the pros and the cons and the probabilities of mental health and, um, the positivity of Gary V. Um, so a little bit about my background. I started out hating Gary V. So for those of you that don't know, um, I used to struggle pretty severely with bipolar disorder. Um, but by the time I was introduced to him to now, um, I no longer need medication. I found my own stability regimen uh, to calculate and curate my own ebbs and flows. Um, I sometimes joke that I've turned my mood cycles into creative cycles. Um, and I started to become aware of Gary Vaynerchuk when I, uh, I guess I was in a down spot for a while. So I was, I was in a bad group of people that I needed to, you know, audit my inner circle and, um, it wasn't until after I audited my inner circle did I start to look at Gary a little bit more objectively. I realized um, he wasn't just some loudmouth who swore a lot that uh, he actually knew what the heck he was talking about, especially when it came to social media. Um, he had a very practical application to growth hacker marketing um, that was really echoed by uh, you know, Ryan Holiday, when I read his book, Growth Hacker Marketing, uh, but Gary Vee, he was actually like giving away the keys to the kingdom, um, in a way that coming from a background of info marketing myself was very refreshing as I was finding the, you know, ethics of selling information when it's, you know, created at zero marginal cost, uh, kind of questionable, um, and it was really refreshing to see somebody giving away, you know, those secrets, but people were like, still, they still treated them like a secret, like it was something special he could do. And that was, you know, that, that was an interesting conundrum to go from a hater to a respecter. Um, and, you know, then to a fan, like I really admired him, especially when I was trying to find myself as an influencer. I really, really had to admire him to, you know, carry myself through um, the part where I wasn't sure whether or not I should be doing stuff like this. Um, but for those of you that know, like, you know, I talk a lot about my journey learning math and um, applying practical mathematics, like, I guess, applied mathematics to theoretical mathematics and physics, which I've liked to study, specifically probabilities. And let me explain to you real quick uh, the difference between probabilities and possibilities. Possibilities are unicorns. Probabilities are rainbows in sunshine after a thunderstorm. It's not something that's guaranteed, but you know that you you have a probability of rainbows and sunshine after a thunderstorm. Um, you can always hope for the possibility that there's going to be unicorns when the clouds part, but it's not a probability. It's just a hope and a dream. It's not something you can actually even work towards uh, unless you want to paste a horn to a horse's head. And then at that point, that's, you know, that's not real. That's fake. Um, so probabilities there, you know, if we get the math right with this rocket ship, we can go to outer space. If we don't, you know, we don't. 
Um, there's no way to, to really fake that. And that's, that's what probabilities are. And what's really interesting is like living through my own experience of the ebbs and flows of mania and depression, I started to notice something really, really interesting that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and I are like mere differences. He came from extreme hardship, uh, you know, entrepreneur family from a young age. Uh, they were immigrants, you know, they, they came with nothing. They created their own abundance. They're hard workers, um, in a whole spectrum of, you know, different perspectives and levels of mental health in his family. I've watched a lot of his content and have learned a lot from him talking about his family. And I find it really interesting. He had like the perfect cocktail to become, you know, really well balanced when it came to the area of having high self-esteem, being self-motivating. Um, what's really interesting is like um, he had that right cocktail to the point where like he never had a ton of opposition to become self-motivating. So me on the flip side, I'm everything that Gary Vee judges. Like I come from middle class, um, you know, my family you know, had enough to make sure that I never knew need and I barely ever knew want until, you know, adulthood. And at that point, like I was coddled, man, like I was coddled even until like a few years ago. Um, uh, let's be realistic. And I have definitely taken advantage of that, um, as much as possible. Um, I didn't have that opposition to work hard, um, from, my parents quite like Gary Vaynerchuk did. Like he, you know, he had a lot of motivation to work hard with that hard work ethic. Uh, my father had an amazingly hard work ethic to the point where, you know, to be fair, like probably workaholic. Um, I love him to death. You know, I put him on a pedestal for a very long time, but he, uh, he wasn't there all the time because he was working to provide for his family. That's, you know, that's the world I grew up in. Like, that's what everyone thought was right, especially back then, especially in our our class that we were in. Um, there was nothing wrong about it until now with context. People are saying, like, you know, there is a thing as working too hard. And even he feels that. Um, even he feels duped with that, you know, intense, I guess what people are calling now hustle porn, which they, you know, unintentionally blame Gary V for being a part of. Um, but he's not like, he actually tells people to, you know, focus on their passions. It's not just, you know, work for money. Like, it's not just that it's work for what you love, what you're passionate. Um, but what's really, really interesting to me is like, he had a lot of hardship early on, but he had that perfect cocktail of, you know, encouragement and support as he says, like the perfect parents, um, but there's something that I have to speak out about uh, so that I feel right about myself when it comes to mental health. Um, and for the longest time, I thought I was projecting. I thought I was projecting at somebody who was sharing an abundance and wealth of knowledge with me and the rest of the world. Like I wanted to believe that he had it right. Um, but I'm realizing the more and more that I experience life in the ebbs and flows of creativity and no longer have the mania and depression cycles. I can have that discipline to let myself experience happiness, but not too much happiness, pain, but not too much pain, and actually seek out happiness when I'm delving too deep into pain and seek out pain and opposition when I'm experiencing too much happiness. And what's really interesting is when I spent time in uh, my stints of mania, um, I started to see, uh, I started to see all constructive criticism as criticism. I used to see it all as the doubters and the haters, um, which was really detrimental to me because like, uh, I wanted to go up, 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 up. And that's the very thing that like, even though like, I can't say that Gary Vee is wrong with where he applies uh, the stuff he knows, like the things he discovers, the practical knowledge he discovers when it comes to social media marketing 
He is hands down the expert, but he is far from a holistic leader on, you know, happiness or self-awareness. And that comes across in his natural inclination to be self-aware, but his lack of discipline in curating spatial awareness. Like he, this, this almost fooled me for a while. So I saw that he had intense spatial awareness in business. But when I started to see that it was, you know, pretty much limited to social media technology companies, social media in that area, business, businesses that could benefit from social media marketing, which is like, like he says, pretty much any business. So he has a very, very attuned spatial awareness for marketing in business, but specifically in the niche of social media marketing and those kind of things. Um, that being said, his spatial awareness for everything else is pretty close to zero. Um, and that's something like he, he's written so long on his talents and he's worked so hard on his talents that essentially he's in a position where, you know, he, he needs to be more well-rounded than he is. And I believe that he's working towards it. I've seen some shifts in his mindset. I see him opening his mindset, but he's not actually letting himself slow down long enough to make those interchanges. Um, and that comes across a lot in the way he talks about meditation, the way he talks about being afraid to look inward, the way he contradicts himself. And what's interesting is a self-aware person, you know, they contradict themselves. Somebody who is in harmony with themselves, they are both spatially aware and self-aware. They contradict the world around them. And what's really interesting is Gary V contradicts the world around him when it comes to the realm of business and marketing. Hands down, plain and simple. Like no one can deny that. But everywhere else, he contradicts himself. And this has a lot to do with, you know, his lack of mindfulness in just being still. Like he's always moving. And you can see that he's built up this manic sprint probably the past 10 years or so. He finally got what he wanted, his opportunity to go out on his own, like he was done with his parents' business, like, and wants to do what he wants to do. And this is quite fascinating because, like, you know, this is the same thing that my wife gets hung up on all the time, but, like, she's worked so hard to overcome it to where the point, like, now she almost never gets hung up on it. And it's really interesting to see so much of Gary V in my wife, but also, you know, so much of what he is in his expert field, but applied holistically. The way she applies it holistically is a way where, like, I realize he talks about empathy, he talks about ego, and when it comes to business, he's probably the most empathetic person, you know, He's got the least ego when it comes to competing in his field. He talks about leaving a lot of things on the table. But what's really interesting is like his ego gets in the way of of a lot of things. Like specifically in business, one thing that's holding him back is his lack of awareness of community building. Um, he outsources this and it's quite interesting to me because like he will add value to other people's communities. And I find that really, really interesting. That's what makes him such a great marketer. Because marketers, like, you know, if they are a business owner and they're trying to really create a business that's not a marketing agency, they're like Steve Jobs. Like, they are tyrants. And that's, like, that's exactly why my wife is the CEO of what we're building. Because, like, I I, I would be the tyrant. Like, I get that. Like, I'm, I'm a lot like Gary Vee, but on a flip side in a way where like I see him building up this manic construct where it's going to come crashing down and he's already put out the details. He's already set his own parameters on how it's going to come crashing down. Like somebody in those like eight to 10 people, which it's very important to remember that number one, people are not things, but the way people 
have a perspective in this world, anything we perceive are things. So the very way he constructs, like his happiness is solidified as long as eight to 10 people are still alive. That's the same thing as saying is like, I'll be happy as long as my Corvette is okay, as long as I have a big house. It seems different because we're told that family is everything. And like, I don't want to downplay the fact that like, family can't be like, very, very important. But if we're banking our happiness on whether or not certain people are alive, it's it's not as shallow as putting our happiness in, you know, consumer goods. But we are creating a fragile construct. And what's really interesting is he's self-aware to admit this, but I I don't see him really running towards the solutions. I see him becoming more and more aware that there are solutions that he needs to be working on. I see him inching towards these things. Like he's very, very comfortable not going into his discomfort zone. And this is something that especially people in in a manic phase run into. And what's really interesting is like, whether or not you're bipolar, Everyone can become manic. Like every single human has the capacity to become manic. The difference between bipolar humans and not bipolar humans are not bipolar humans can be manic a lot longer than bipolar humans. It's more likely that bipolar humans are going to have those ups and downs, those drastic ups and downs, that they have intense elasticity where Gary Vee has that rigidity from focus and will where he can become manic for a day, plateau out, recharge with his family, you know, be manic for a day, plateau, recharge with his family, be manic for a day, plateau, recharge for his family for an extended period of time, and then, you know, become, go manic again. Like, and this is really, really interesting because this is, this is the same type of hypo productivity which is still productive, like hypo productivity is still productive the same way people are, who are counterproductive are usually the most creative innovators. They have those bursts of like ingenious moments where they invent like, you know, the new, new thing. Um, so let me not downplay the fact that like Gary Vee is a genius. He is an expert. He is amazing at what he does. He is probably one of the most self-aware people on the earth today, but like he's also, he's setting himself up for massive failure. And the crazy thing is, is he knows this, like I'm preaching to the choir for anybody who knows him. But this video, this is for the skeptics, this is for the haters to understand his value. And to also understand like, you know, if you're one struggling to find harmony, Gary V is not that example, but if you're one who's promoting harmony and you want to understand how to gain an audience, build an audience, Gary V is a great example. Like he's sharing great knowledge that I can guarantee if you are put on tilt by his, by his presentation, by who he is, and you discount his knowledge, you're doing yourself a grave disservice because you're going to have to end up paying for somebody else who's just repackaging what he's saying. Like, heck, like that's why I just repackage what he's saying, but I don't sell it. Like some people, they sell it and he hates that. So I'm trying to respect his wishes with that and I give it away just like he does. But I package it for the people who are looking to find that harmony. And... That's the sort of thing where, like, I really, really respect him, but, like, I really feel bad for all of his employees, for the empire he's building, because, you know, depending who it is that he loses in those eight to ten people, because, like, you have, you have the kids, which that would be the most devastating thing for him if he lost one of them. His wife, you know, right above there, like, his parents right above there, and then anyone else in that eight to ten people, like... We're we're talking about like six weeks to six years of downtime. The mania he's building up, he's going to have to recover. And this is really, really important to remember that when anybody goes from like happiness into mania, it happens in the macro, in the big picture. It's like you have that instant gratification 
of happiness, and this can come from gratitude even on the back end. And then when we compound it by doing things we want to do, doing what we want, and we use that as fuel, it's not sustainable. Just the same way that somebody who's doing things out of like rage or pain or whatever, it's not sustainable. It's It could be a good jump start to get you moving, you know, in a game, but like you don't want to live your whole life being angry at people. Um, and that's the same thing. On the flip side, nobody talks about this. The dangers of, you know, fueling yourself with gratitude alone. Like gratitude is great, but to have it be your constant fuel, I mean, that's the same as emotional cocaine. And that's something I've, I've lived years on that. And that's like, I was fortunate enough to have bipolar disorder to where it came crashing down. And then, you know, I did the thing that I was resisting just as much as Gary Vee does, that harmony thing. Like, I resisted meditation and that shit for years. But now I found, like, the one thing I was really horrible at, which is doing, which is what he's great at. Like, I found that meditating helped me get to the point where I figured out how to meditate while I was doing. And that's something that I thought Gary Vee was doing. But... It only applies to the things he wants to do, which the awareness that I've gained from my wife, the insight that I've gotten from her is like, for me, like the meditation from doing helps me do things I don't want to do just as much as things I do want to do when I don't want to do them right now. I don't have the luxury of always wanting to do the things that I want to do. That's why I'm one of the counterproductive types, whereas Gary Vee and my wife are the hypoproductive types. They always want to do what they want to do. And the problem is, is when he has this fragile construct and his bottom is ripped out from him, if it's his wife, his kid, like, interestingly enough, I think losing a child is the worst thing a human being could ever go through. But, you know, if he lost his wife, it would, it would be more detrimental to his business than losing a kid. Like, Losing a kid would be more detrimental to his marriage than, you know, losing his wife, which is interesting. This is just, you know, that psycho babble that nobody likes, the mental health stuff that, like, Gary Vee says is a good thing, but, like, he, he has good mental health habits in very focused areas of his life, but he doesn't know how to do his own psychological analysis of himself, um... In a way that isn't just glimpses. He's not able to get that perspective that he craves because he doesn't stop for long enough. I truly, truly believe that like he just gets too anxious. He gets, you know, he, he feels too negative and he resists that negativity and he resists it so much that he's actually hurting himself and his family in a way that like I lump his employees in with his family because that's his extended family. The same way that, you know, a parent thinks that their children are better off with them than without them. Um, he has that same mentality with his employees. It's why, like, his ego gets in the way where, like, he's he struggles with radical candor with other people and himself. He struggles with being honest with himself with the things he doesn't want to think about. The things that are outside of his pure purview. And this is the expert dilemma. And this is something really, really fascinating because like, you know, I think it's really interesting that like he's figured out this perfect recipe of masking these things to where like I had to study him. Like I'm not a psychologist. Like I, I just understand mental health. I live it. I live it daily. So like, I'm sure if I had, you know, taken psychology classes, I'd figure out how to diagnose this stuff. Like, shit, like, my psychologists and stuff, like, they told me to be careful of people like Gary Vee. But, like, at the end of the day, he helped me do the things that they couldn't. So, like, there's something to be said about that. But I also have grown to love him and become fond of him. And I want to, on one hand, give some validation to the people who are hesitant giving him any ounce of respect or admiration or anything for what he knows, even for what he knows, which I think is really, really dumb. Like, we don't like a good idea be because of who created it. Like, we don't, we don't almost all use, you know, 
mobile phones, smartphones because of, you know, Steve Jobs or the founders of Google. Like, that's not why we use them. We use them because they're a good idea. Like, we don't use a car because of the inventor of the car. Like, do you even remember who the inventor of the car was? Do you remember who the inventor of the shovel or the boat was? Do you remember who the inventor of, like, you know, the first idea of the airplane was? The first idea of the helicopter was? Like, you know, even if we look those things up, even if we were, like, okay, like, you know, looked at the historians and what they say, like, oh, yeah, Leonardo da Vinci was the first one to invent the helicopter wasn't the first one to make it, but like first one to invent the idea. Like we don't, we don't really care if a good idea, who came up with the good idea. And that's something that's really, really interesting. I mean, we still use PR, even though the, you know, Edward Bernays was a huge fan of fascism and like also the, the Nazi propaganda prime minister, like, Nazi propaganda minister like was a huge fan of Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays literally invented PR, but it's you know, it's not a horrible idea. I mean like PR organizations in a digital age where we can live stream and have control over our own PR stream, that's a PR organization is kind of a bad idea. Um which is ironic because like it's kind of what that's the service that Gary V sells is that PR service to to brands, um, which I think is a good way to transition the big corporate brands into becoming more personal again. So like I commend his strategy, but it's interesting. Like he continues to contradict himself because he sees it as like himself against the world. And as somebody who's also been bullied, I get that. Like I get where he's coming from, where it's him versus the world. But he's not able to take a break from competing with the world to realize how he's competing with himself. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, if we're competing with ourselves, like, on the court, if you're competing with yourself, you know, like, you're always going to be evenly matched. You're never going to score a point. Like, you're going to shoot, but you're never going to score a point. Neither one, like... If you're really playing yourself, you're never going to score a point. That's the, th And even if you did, you're only scoring on yourself. And that's kind of the point. That's why even if you score, you're not really scoring a point. And that's the crazy thing. It's like Gary Vee's never going to listen to anyone until until it's too late. And, you know, he's he's going to have to start over again. Fortunately, he's also prepping himself for that when he has to start over again. And he's building up a reputation where, like, it's really all or nothing. Like, he's building an organization to survive. But the very fact he's building a corporation, it can out-survive him. And that's it. Like, I mean, heaven forbid he lose his wife or a child. Like, he's never going to recover. Like, he's never going to recover. Let me put this in probabilistic timeline he's never going to recover quick enough to recover his company and this is the same sort of trap steve jobs fell into like he was in that manic trap and he got pushed out and there was nothing he could do and this is something really really interesting because like gary v is really really empathetic for people that want what he's selling or who are like him and I think that's really, really dangerous, especially for the people who, you know, happen to be bipolar who are like him. Um, I really hope that he doesn't have to navigate people, you know, people who are ha fans of him that end up committing suicide because they don't get the right ingredients in the right order. Like, that would be, like, that would be the worst news for me as a fan of his. Like, that's the sort of thing. Like, it's he's really great at building an audience, but he's he's really, really bad at, at building communities. And that's something where, like, I, I think, interestingly enough, he doesn't read books. Like, he prides himself in not reading books. But Priya Parker's book, uh, The Art... <laughs> you know, 
The Art of Gathering, I think it's called, I, I can't remember the title exactly, that's why I hesitated, um, Why We Gather, something like that. Priya Parker, uh, she's a genius on this stuff, like, she's a facilitator, which is different than being a leader, like what Gary Vee is, he's a leader, she's a facilitator, and what that means is, like, she is comfortable helping people facilitate, um, helping people facilitate a community, even when she's not the one leading, and that's something that Gary Vee has outsourced for that, but, like, what's interesting is, like, He's not comfortable enough letting go of control in community scenarios. That's why his audiences grow, but his groups struggle. I find that really, really interesting. He's good at these focused mastermind groups, but he's not really good at large groups, especially when people aren't there to see him. And this is something like I haven't seen him talk a lot on but like it's very very apparent in his choices and his actions and the disparity between what he does and what he doesn't do um and I know he does anything that he's good at so anything that he doesn't do he's not good at and that's the he talks about is like find those things that we're talented at and do them like he doesn't understand that we can grow talent and I think this is something like part of him part of him won't let himself believe that because you know that fear of regret regret like he doesn't want to regret like <laughs> believing that he could have curated talent in sports and that's something like I had to do like I had natural talent in sports and I gave it up because things started to get too hard and I didn't have that work ethic but I definitely know that talent can be curated. Like my talent for the creative arts was curated because I gave up on sports. That's it. Like talent can be curated. My talent for marketing, specifically in the area of communities, like I'm, I am, I feel like I am what Gary V was to audience building 10 years ago to communities now. And the irony is, is like, if I claim that, like, I'm not as appealing to hear it from. So I sound like a know-it-all condescending asshole when I, when I talk about, you know, my personal truths. When I talk about what I'm good at, you know, I sound like I'm self-promoting. This is what, ironically, people who are really, really mindful when they're self-promoting, this is what they're really, really good at. And this is why I love books like Jab, 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 Right Hook. Like, he's really good at explaining how to do what he does. And that's be mindful of other people, but it's really, it's really feigning mindfulness. It's, he's being respectful for other people. Um, the fact of the matter is when you distribute that out enough, like if somebody were to only see those right hooks, they just think he's asking all the time. And that's where it's kind of self-defeating, where that mindfulness is understanding that a community happens in a one-on-one. -on -one. And this is something like, it's understanding that timing is really, really important. Like, I struggle with interrupting people. So does Gary V. Like, he understands the value to his audience. Um, but interestingly enough, like, the very thing that I've done to try and combat that, which is taking notes and asking questions at the end, because, like, that's, that's the most mindful thing you can do. Um, you don't have that back and forth banter. Like, I'm sure he gets a little anxious when he has a good idea, when he has a good thought and he can't like just put it out there. And what's really interesting is like, that works well when he's with people like himself, but it doesn't work well for people that aren't mindful enough to know that's just who he is. So that's why he tends to have have to explain himself when he says like you know he has to explain why he's interrupting people and instead of just resolving that dilemma like really working on resolving that so he can be as respectful as possible and what's ironic is like these all play to the values that he cares about it's just it's so efficient that like he has to do things the hypoproductive way 
and literally fail at the finish line to really catch up and realize like anything is possible. It's completely limitless. Like he wants to be successful at business, but he hinders himself. And that's why like he's really good at self-funding stuff, but like he's kind of wasteful when he's playing with other people's money. Like I'm completely the opposite. Like I'm I'm on point when I'm playing with other people's money. Like he's on point when he's trying to get other people's attention and he has what they want, where that's where I drop the ball. Like I, I do myself a disservice with that. So I get it. Like I have empathy for him there. And like what's interesting is, is like this is all really harsh. Like the truth can hurt. Like the truth is kindness. Like I talk about this in one of my articles, nice versus kind. And this is like how they are at verse, how are how those two concepts are at odds with each other. And that's why I'm really, really passionate about this. Like, this is the sort of thing, it's really tough for me to get out. So I have to channel that, you know, manic energy to really bring myself down to talk about these hard things or else I'll overwhelm myself with the fact that like, I don't want to offend somebody who's like, you know, one of my idols. Um, maybe idol is the wrong word, like definitely one of my examples, like somebody who helped me remotely quite a bit figure out some things, some harsh truths about myself. And if I wasn't burning through this, you know, manic energy of a good idea and just, you know, record this and go for it right now, like I probably wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have found, you know, the mindfulness to just go ahead for it and like put it out there. And that's, uh, that's something that wasn't always easy for me. Like, it's still not easy. Like, I still have to self-motivate myself to go out there. And, like, people will accuse me of psychoanalyzing other people, and nobody likes that. But we're living in an interconnected world where, like, people can't afford to not manage their own PR. Like, we live in a world where the ethics of psychology are kind of broken. Like, people who understand psychology, people who understand mental health... We can't afford not to psychoanalyze people, but we have to do it in a respectful manner. We can't just accuse people. We can't just blame people. We can't just tell people they're broken. Like Gary Vee is the least broken person I know at his level. And like, I, I would go as far to say like, he's as perfect as all of us are. Like we're all perfect in our own unique way, but he still has a lot of room to grow like all of us. Ironically, I think he has less room to grow than almost all of us. That being said, it's even more important for him to dedicate the time and discomfort to growing himself so he doesn't betray his fans, so he doesn't have the PR nightmare of having somebody who's like living his mantra but isn't as strong as him and ends up committing suicide. Like that would break my heart it would break my heart if like you know some tragedy struck and he just lost all motivation to work and his company fell apart and he just lost all motivation to care because this is the thing it's like all it has to do is be something work related and like his family somebody in his family is lost and he wasn't there or whatever and like he hates what he's doing. Like, that's how fragile his emotional state is at that level. It's, it's something that didn't apply 10 years ago to him in that hustle, in that grind. But now everything is magnified. That black swan effect, everything can come crashing down with something as minuscule as, you know, he loses a loved one and, you know... They had their last moments in a hospital, but he couldn't get there because of work. Something that, like, he'll either have to blame himself or something exterior. And that's the sort of thing where, like, you can only love the interconnected nature of technology so much until you realize, like, the question, is it even worth it if you couldn't be there? when tragedy strikes and that's the thing it's like it's understanding that like this is exactly why like my wife and I are on this journey together like we're gonna be there every step of the way even raise our kids on the go 
it's unconventional, but we don't give a fuck. And people are telling us that's wrong, that like our kids, like that would be wrong to our kids. They need to have stability. Like we, you have enough money, you can afford to have that stability. And like, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's, it's just an excuse. And that's the very thing. It's like, yes, I'm projecting the same way Gary V projects on the world that he knows more than them. Not that he knows better. Like he just knows more about his realm. And this happens to be my realm. This happens to be my wife's realm. This happens to be the realm of a lot of people that, you know, don't respect what Gary V knows in his realm. But oddly enough, if they applied it, we could bring balance to the people that could unintentionally be hurt when that black swan effect happens. And like, I, I know Gary Vee doesn't read. So like I, I could refer like black swan and Nassim Taleb's books. I think he'd get a kick out of them, but you know, if he got Priya Parker on his show and he got Nassim Taleb on his show and he talked about, you know, why we gather in community building on that sense and um, how to build an accommodating community of both inclusion and exclusion and create those niches for communities to be mindful of the people who think different. Um, I, I think he would, I think he would fill in a lot of his gaps. I think he would go lengths that he's not even aware are possible in you know, protecting his own, protecting his company, protecting his family. Um, and, you know, I, I would love to see, you know, a podcast episode with him talking to Priya Parker. I, I would love to see a podcast episode of him talking to Nassim Taleb about the Black Swan effect. Um, and interestingly enough, one of the things I talk about practicing is anti-fragile mental health. Um, which is being as disruptive as Gary Vee is, but in the realm of mental health. Um, I don't mean to diagnose or accuse or blame, but I just wanted to give validation to the haters so hopefully they can have empathy, understand that, like, don't ask what Gary Vee can do for you. Ask what you can do for the Gary Vee community. That's it. Like, plain and simple. Like, Let's just keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind and blow it up to the whole world. Like, stop asking what the world can do for you and ask yourself what you can do for the world. If you know more, don't promote that you know better. Like, and that's it. Like, understanding that, like, it, you're going to come across as condescending because nobody wants to feel like anyone knows more. But this is exactly why, like, you know, Ryan Holiday just published an article about... <laughs> you know, why Jack of all trade, like an argument for Jack's of all trade. And these are the things it's like Gary V has brought me so much value. I'd be doing him and fans like me a disservice by not putting that out, not putting this out there, not getting over my fear of sharing what I know that breaks that barrier of privacy and secrecy and puts that responsibility, puts that ball in the court for like, Gary Vee to put that out there. It's like, how do we know how to draw the line between gratitude and gratification? That's something that we have to delve deep inside of ourselves and see things that, you know, oddly enough, like I had the same sentiment as Gary Vee about drugs until a year ago when I was out of options and I went from taking medications, prescription medications, to using medical marijuana and I've been experimenting with psilocybin, um, psilocybin therapy and I'm done with treatments. Like that's all I can say. Like the psychiatrist that was treating me for like almost two decades, you know, from a medical and legal perspective, like nobody's really cured of mental illness, but like for all intents and purposes, like I'm, I'm done. And that's the very thing. Like, I have no interest to be doing drugs. I have no interest. Like, I, I do everything I can to resist using them recreationally. Like, I, I use them 
probably less often than I should to find my boundaries and use them therapeutically. But interestingly enough, like I, I still, I still don't try and promote these things. I still think that it needs to be done with respect the same way that, you know, managing an audience of millions, being a thought leader needs to be handled with care and respect. And that's the very thing where like, I have never seen somebody so mindful of their customers, so customer ex- obsessed as Gary V, but also so ignorant of how to be mindful of a community of people who think different because he has two types of people that he needs to be mindful of. He needs to be mindful of his customers, which he is customer obsessed, but he also needs to be mindful of his fans. And he he isn't quite sure how to be fan obsessed for the same way, like he loves it when people like him work for him, but he doesn't know how to accommodate for people who don't think like him. And I think that has a lot to do with the things I talked about. Um, and, you know, this hurts me to put this out there. Like, this this is not something that, that comes easy. I mean, in a world of trolls, like, we have to understand that, like, contradictorians, contrarians, I guess... <laughs> is the word contrarians and skeptics and haters and trolls. Some of them actually do know more, but they don't know how to sell what they know. And this is something that interestingly enough, like I don't really know anybody who knows how to help on this in a social media, digital media world. Like I'm at this point where like, I feel like I'm learning so much from my wife and I feel like one day she's going to write a book about this that I, I, I wish I had like years ago. I think, you know, I don't know. I just, I just care about everyone and I don't know how not to care. And I resonate with Gary V on that, but I also feel like I have an easier time listening to haters. I have an easier time living with pain than he does. And I think that comes from the fact that, like, you know, my, my best example is, like, I I talk about Dragon Ball Millennials a lot. Um, that's one of the brands that I'm running right now. It's based on my fandom and Dragon Ball Z over the years. And I was really, really happy to hear Gary V talk about, like, you could start up a Dragon Ball Z, like, thing and, like, make, like... <laughs> 70 something thousand dollars a year and I'm like true to that like and I, I'm doing that with all the things I was fans of Dragon Ball Millennials and other Millennials brands to come um and I'm putting his knowledge to the test and it's it's working and it, it works a lot and it's really interesting because like I don't even know where I was going with this at this point I'm probably self-promoting a little bit too much and I'm losing myself in the ego. Um, But I just... I really... I really resonate with Goku's character now. I never did before. I resonated with Trunks' character. I really like the idea that somebody could, you know, know more, be from the future, that kind of stuff. Um, That's how I kind of saw people like... Steve Jobs and, you know, Bill Gates and the Elon Musks and the Gary V's, like people who are like from the future almost, um, people who champion the future and who work with you to build a new future, a better future, um, who will fight there alongside you. And like Trunks is my favorite. He always was my favorite. But now I really resonate with Goku who has this knack for turning, you know, friends, uh, turning enemies into friends And he doesn't do this by, you know, (laughs) keeping them at arm's length, putting the knowledge out there for them to, like, figure out how to compliment his ego. He literally does it by beating them to a pulp. 
he shows them by example. And like, that's it. That's what I feel like I have to do. Like, I feel like I have to beat people to a pulp when it comes to emotional stuff, psychological stuff. Cause we have like this really shitty construct of getting psychological help. We're like, psychologists can't promote psychology like they can't sell people on why they need psychology like that's literally the worst pr strategy like that i've ever heard like they can't like, it's so so sad it's it's exactly why when like when they started doing like facebook ads for the <laughs> for uh the suicide prevention hotline and like getting help for like addiction treatment and that shit like it takes off like it's really really easy to psychologically profile people and like hone in on them and get them the right ad at the right time but yet like psychologists resist marketing this stuff they resist finding people to help they resist putting it out there and i think this has a lot to do with the fact that like you know, I, I practice mental health, like Gary V practiced business the past like 20 or 30 years. Um, and I'm realizing the whole contract is broken. And, and that's it. Like, I want to change it all because like, we need to be able to listen to people who contradict what we say, because if we can be contradicted, we're not right. We're just not like, that's it. Like, if we feel like we're contradicted, we're not right. If somebody's contradicting us, but we don't feel like we're being contradicted, you know, we probably know more. We probably know how to explain to them how we're not contradicted. But, like, if we feel, like, uneasy, if we feel like we're being accused, if we feel like we're being hated on, if we feel like we're being bullied, like, we can't use gratitude to get ourselves out of that. We can't be grateful that we, they have, uh, you know, we have their attention and like try and distract them to just be manic. Like th that we're doing a disservice to ourselves at that point. And that's something that like I've experienced firsthand and like, there's just not enough awareness that like we can say what we mean and it doesn't have to be mean just because sometimes the truth hurts. And that's what I talk about in my article, Nice versus Kind. Like, nice does not tolerate honesty. Kindness does. So if we ever think that we're being nice by, like, not sharing our personal truth, which contradicts somebody's personal truth, and it's going to offend them, that's why, like, Gary Vee struggles with radical candor. And that's this. This is me being radically candid. This is me literally calling out somebody who I see as a distributed mentor, somebody who like, oddly enough, I try and reach out to, to meet like every few months, like I do whatever I can. And like, but I, I'm, I'm, I also am aware. I'm kind of like a dog chasing a car. I don't know what I do with meeting him. If I actually got to him, I do nothing but self promote. Cause I want his validation or some shit. So like, oddly, like I never want to meet Gary V. Because I respect him too damn much. And that's weird. Like, that's really, really weird. Like, I want to practice everything he's talking about so that, like, he can understand. So that he can understand the things he doesn't want to understand. So he can learn the things he doesn't want to learn. So he can care more about what he wants. Because I'm glad he found happiness, but peace is so much more powerful than happiness. That's why they say peace and happiness, because peace comes first. And peace is the absence of happiness and pain. And that's something we're never taught. Like, that's what harmony is. That's what it means to be in harmony with yourself. To be absence of happiness. To be absence of gratitude, but also to be absent of pain. If we're constantly chasing happiness and gratitude, like we're just running away from pain. And somebody, somebody really wise once told me, his name is Stephen Hernandez. And he told me that like the biggest motivator for humans is regret avoidance. And that's something that Gary V echoes to like the ends of the earth. But here's, here's the honest truth. Like, 
And you know what's ironic is like I say that and I know people tend to like I've heard them talk about the logical fallacy where if you have to say something is the honest truth, it's probably not. So <laughs> shit, I have to call myself out on that. Um, here's what I know. Regret avoidance is huge, but pain avoidance, that's even bigger. That's why people struggle to understand Gary Vee's context because it's painful to watch all of his shit. Like he doesn't create the linear paths that people need to educate themselves concisely. It's information overload. And um, he's really, really good at making micro content, but fuck, like he doesn't have any learning paths to, to get there. Um, he creates these blueprints and shit that, but like, he, he's got to do the equivalent, like courses and everything. And for every person, like audio courses, like video courses, all that shit, like he's, or else it's, it's just never gonna, it's never going to reach that. And that's the sort of thing where I think like learning what Priya Parker knows would really help him in that area. Um, and sometimes we just, we just need a change of environment and it can be uncomfortable. For example, like I'm not an outdoorsy person. Like I used to make fun of people who went camping saying that they were just playing pretend like they were homeless. They were so rich that they just wanted to pretend like they were homeless. But, you know, what I had to do to get myself through that, like I had to push myself into the discomfort zone. So being a city person, I like that city vibe. I forced myself to live out in like a town of like, I think like 200 people, less than 200 people, like literally like a two road town, crossroad town like that in on the East coast and just completely disconnected and literally push myself to be uncomfortable as long as it took for me to be comfortable. And then as long as it took for me to be comfortable in the place that I was uncomfortable, I spent twice as long learning how to be more comfortable there. And that's helped me become comfortable in more places that are disconnected like that. So that's the thing is like you can now do things that like I never thought possible for me like I've literally curated a talent for myself to be mindful in places that I've never been mindful before to be aware in places that I've never been aware before to be comfortable being silently inside of myself Understanding that things that I don't want to do are exactly how I get to know myself more. And I'm so much more than the things I want. And I realize that by doing things that I don't want to do. Literally listening to people who hate me. Like turning enemies into allies like Goku does. So I hope you can understand that, like, not only am I one of the haters, like, I'm a fan, but I'm still a hater. And that's how I contradict the world, where I can be both a fan and a hater of Gary Vee at the same time. Because I'm consistent with myself. And that's something that the world doesn't like. The world doesn't like people that contradict them. So I wanted to put that out there for anyone that, you know, needed this. Please reach out to me if you want. You can find my channels on YouTube. I think it's about time and it's with a question mark. You can find me on Instagram, Jace Not Chase. That's J A C E C H A C E. You 
you can find me at my library of consciousness and that's you can find that at libraryofconsciousness.com or my.libraryofconsciousness.com please shoot me a message you know shoot me an email if you want you can find me thank you